it would take over 30,000 bones to eat that wow. much bone. <laughs> Wow! I think I get the picture! TikTok says fiber fixes everything from bloating to digestion issues. But is this fiber maxing trend actually good for your gut or is it wrecking it? I'm Dr. Sethi, a gastroenterologist. Let's break down fiber maxing and how to do it without the gas, bloating or bathroom emergencies. I'll walk you through what works, what doesn't and how this fiber actually affects your gut. Let's separate science from the hype. Fiber maxing. Everyone's talking about it and we love it. It's the trend that's flipping the script on food hacks. Instead of focusing on what to cut out, it's about what to add in. More plants, more texture, more variety. This simple pea and pesto orzo already contains 10 different plants, but we took it one step further by adding a scoop of Daily 30. Fiber is king when it comes to gut microbiome health. Every scoop of Daily 30 has five grams of fiber from over 30 plants. No extra prep required. Trend or not, it's one of the simplest ways you can fiber max any meal. That is spot on. Fiber is essential. It feeds a good bacteria in your gut, helps with regularity, and can help manage blood sugar and cholesterol. Many people don't get enough fiber, but when they double up overnight, that's when problems start. Hold it. Is that what you're having for breakfast? Sure. Haven't you heard? Fiber is really good for you. Well, there's fiber, and that then is... there's high fiber. Try this. Oh, that is correct. Sounds delicious. But is it really higher in fiber than my oat brand cereal? So what I do want to know is what kind of fiber it has, insoluble or soluble, because both of those have absolutely different effects on your colon. Take a guess. How many bowls of your oat brand cereal would it take to equal the fiber content of one bowl of colon blow? Two. Guess again. Three. We'll give you one more guess. Nine. It would take over 30,000 bowls to eat that much. Wow. <laughs> you have to eat 10 bowls a day every day for that eight is and a half years. Wow. I think I get the picture. Well, jokes apart, most of us are deficient in fiber and fiber is the food for our gut microbiome. People are cramming their carbs with fiber-rich veggies, beans, and whole grains. But if your gut is not used to it, that can mean bloating, cramps, even diarrhea or constipation. This is how you turn your oats from this to this. Doubling the size of them, still keeping them super thick and creamy without adding any calories. Step one, buy psyllium husk. Psyllium husk, I love that for my patients who are suffering from bloating, constipation, and even irritable bowel syndrome. It is one of the most studied supplements when it comes to bloating and IBS. So five grams of psyllium husk, you take away two and a half grams of oats, and that evens out the calories. I'm planning to have 65 grams of oats. Oats get such a bad name on the social media these days, but the truth is they are high in fiber and really good for our gut microbiome. Doubling fiber sounds productive, but only if you're doubling water too. Quick reminder, if you're trying to make sense of all the gut health advice out there, Healthline's newsletter is a great place to start. It is expert-backed, science-based, and free. Increase fiber gradually, just a few grams a day. And don't forget fluids. When you add fiber, your body needs more water too. That helps avoid the gas, bloating, and bathroom trouble. Foods like beans, vegetables, and whole grains are great natural sources of fiber. Get all that stuck poop out with this home remedy. Who doesn't like to clean out their stomach? Your breath will be freshened with this internal cleansing using this homemade laxative. They just mentioned cleaning stomach, but I think they mean cleaning colon. If you suffer from constipation, this treatment is perfect for you. It will eliminate old residues. Gases and odor will disappear. Even bad breath will vanish. Those are some big promises. Heat a glass of water and add a touch of salt. Add the juice of half a lime and mix well. It will eliminate intestinal parasites and cleanse your intestines. All right, all right. I have to call them out on this. This parasite cleanse business is all over the internet these days. I want to go on record saying that I do not support this. Absolutely no scientific evidence behind these kind of practices. If you are concerned about any parasitic infestations, make sure you talk to your doctor and get that stool testing done. All these parasitic cleanses that you're seeing all over the internet, they're basically garbage. So I will give this video a thumbs down. 
let's bust a few more fiber myths. Myth, high fiber diets are great for everyone. Not always. If you've got IBS, IBD or other gut conditions, you might need to be more cautious with fiber. Fiber maxing is not one size fits all. Myth, water causes bloat. The opposite is true. Fiber needs water to move through your gut. Without it, you will get bloated, backed up and miserable. Myth, if you are over 50, fiber can't hurt you. High fiber is not one size fits all, even for older adults. Maybe some whole wheat toast, want it? Oh, sweet, thanks. All right, time to clean up this mess. Hey, can somebody tell stuff to drink some more water? We're stuck. I'm glad someone made a video on the differences between soluble and insoluble fiber. Hey, I made you some beans. Want some? Thanks. Soluble fiber is usually my go-to fiber when I'm taking care of patients with either diarrhea or constipation. What do we got going on here? Where's all the veggies? Let's clean this mess up. That's an important distinction. Soluble fiber dissolves in water and insoluble does not. Woo, good stuff. Uh-oh. She's brewing down there. I noticed you was enjoying beans, which have a lot of fiber and protein. However, people with bloating and irritable bowel syndrome need to be careful with beans because these are considered to be high FODMAPs. That means they can worsen the bloating in sensitive individuals. How do you know fiber maxing is working? Your poop tells the story. With the right fiber balance, your stool should be smooth, formed, and easy to pass, like a soft sausage or snake. That is Bristol types three and four. Yes, there is a chart for your poop. Anything too loose or too hard, you may need to adjust your fiber or fluids. Metamucil has a choking hazard? It's there. So let me tell you why Metamucil or psyllium has a choking hazard in the fine print. That is true. That happened to one of my family members as well. So the fiber in Metamucil is supposed to soak up water and turn into a jelly-like consistency. But if you don't drink enough water, then it can get stuck in the back of your throat, swell up and turn into cement. And on top of it, if you take the supplement without increasing your water intake, the cement is also going to form in your colon. You're going to be backed up and it's gonna be very difficult for you to have a bowel movement. Just drink enough water, otherwise it literally does the opposite of helping you go. Absolutely correct. I will give it two thumbs up. Insoluble fiber keeps you thin and I stand by that. I've lost 30 pounds and I can relate to this. And I would say fiber played a big role in my weight loss journey. At my healthiest, I was eating a bowl of Kashi cereal with 13 grams of insoluble fiber and an apple a day. And I was using the bathroom multiple times, which is an indicator of a fast metabolism. And not necessarily guys, having multiple bowel movements a day may mean that you need an evaluation. You know, it could be inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, amongst multiple other GI causes. I was also talking about how the food industry has combined them into just dietary fiber and they're two different fibers. You need to know which is which. And they are taking the insoluble fiber out of our cereals. That is a big problem. If you go to a grocery store and you look at all the cereal boxes, you would notice that most of those are high in sugar and low in fiber. I like to tell my patients that these cereals are actually cereal killers. If they don't provide us enough fiber and they load us up with sugar, that means they're setting us up for poor gut health and high risk for metabolic diseases. And with the soluble, when it says enriched, that means that they've taken all the fiber out through processing and then they've thrown it back in, uh, you know, man-made. And that's where the fiber one bars come in. So. My coworker, let's call her Cheryl, you know, would eat multiple bars of these a day and her would get such bad trapped gas, she would have to go home. So what I think is happening over here is that a lot of these bars that you get in the supermarket, they have artificial sweeteners in them. And some of the studies have found that these artificial sweeteners like aspartame can wreak havoc on our gut microbiome. It became like a period of a few months where Cheryl would go home every 
afternoon, like clockwork, hunched over. I mean, just could barely move. We thought, oh God, Cheryl's dying. Cheryl's dying. What's going on? And then Cheryl told me one day, yeah, she's been eating three or four of these uh, fiber one brownies every day. Some of these gas pains can be excruciating. A lot of people actually confuse these gas pains with appendicitis, gallstone attack, kidney stones, heart attack sometimes, something to be aware of. You can have severe abdominal pain with just gas. If it is persisting and happening more than occasionally, then you definitely need an assessment. Cheryl, don't you know? It's got the enriched soluble fiber in it. That's, you know, stirring things up, not pushing it out. You need a balance of both. There is no question that soluble and insoluble fiber both are important for our gut microbiome. But there is third thing to this equation, and that is plenty of water. Most of us need to aim to consume two to three liters of water on a daily basis. Well, this video had quite a bit of good information. I would give it a thumbs up. So I went on a high fiber kick, baby. I'm talking while Zuckerberg was turning Facebook into meta, I was becoming Metamucil. I'm talking beans, fruits, veggies, high fiber tortillas, high fiber ice cream. If it had fiber in it, I was eating it. Few days go by, I haven't pooped, which is concerning. This is an example of fiber maxing gone wrong. Finally, after 12 days without painting a bowl, I decided to consult my primary care physician, Mr. Urgent Care. I go in, one of the first questions they ask, what's your fiber intake like? It's my time to shine, pal. I tell them, I don't know, maybe 100 grams a day, 120 on a good day. They say, Jesus Christ, you gotta slim that down, bro. Long story short, make sure you're getting your fiber in but not too much of it. Yeah, this is not an uncommon scenario these days. You know, I see people walking into my clinic with such stories because of this trend of fiber maxing all over the social media. It's good to increase your fiber intake, but make sure you do it gradually and also increase your water intake along with it. Fiber without water is gonna plug you up and you're gonna curse Dr. Sethi. All right, here are the do's. Add fiber slowly, hydrate more, and focus on whole foods. And the don'ts, don't overdo it, don't skip water, and don't ignore gut symptoms. Fiber maxing should make you feel better, not worse. If something feels off, don't push through. Your gut is trying to tell you something. Fiber is powerful, but more is not always better, especially if you rush it. And that's how you fiber max without the fallout. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and check out Healthline's newsletter. Your gut will thank you.